Um, and this is a, with, it pertains to a particular property that's located in Belito. Um, it's a very beautiful part of the world, very lovely beaches, but on one particular beach called Willard Beach, and some of our viewers might be familiar with this particular beach and property, is an abandoned building. It's, it's actually a mansion, if you come to think about it. It's got amazing views of the sea. The problem is a couple of years back, there were high tides and really bad weather that destroyed a portion or, uh, or the front portion of the property. And it's very dangerous to, for anyone to stay in that property. The problem is I think that the property itself was built below any water lines that uh, you know, were established at that particular beach. And that now also runs the risk of further damage and further uh, you know, um, uh, uh, risk of people being injured if they had to move into that property. I think the question now is, for a savvy property investor who wanted to maybe purchase this property and then put some money into it to restore it to its former glory or whatever it may be, what are the sort of risks that they face? Is it a good investment for them to make? And then also equally, what does the law state about building close to water? So um, this is a question for both of you. I think, Solna, we can start with you and then move over to Bruno. Brilliant. So I'll be, uh, I'll be relatively quick on mine. The thing is, remember, building lines are very clear and it, it's recorded uh, with every municipality. So building lines, luckily, isn't something that you have to wonder where they lie. It's not like, uh, you know, if you're looking for water, you don't have to walk with like sticks and try and find the water line here. Um, it's, it, it would be under the building line because your town planner would never allow a, a building line to extend past your, your water line. So that's a, <clears throat> actually a very interesting thing that that happened because the, the one thing that could happen, and this does happen um, as, we, uh, uh, as we are um, seeing climate changes and we see water levels rise, it does happen that maybe in 1652, when Jan van Riebeer cropped up, the water line was much, much further, and now he, he moved up, the water line moved up. If that happens, and it does happen, and I've seen properties, luckily we don't live in like the Netherlands or somewhere where that happens at a slightly quicker rate than, than what we see. But if that does happen, your, your council must typically um, attend to the, the, the move of the, of the building lines. But... In this particular case, your question wasn't how the law works on that. The question was, if you're an investor and you're looking at a property like that, what do you do? Well, the first thing is have a look, get a, a, a not an attorney. This is not a lawyer question. This is a town planner question. Get a town planner in there. Find out where the true lines are. And before you even almost consider a building like that, get a, a structural engineer in because the truth is if a building was partially damaged, it's not like a birthday cake that you accidentally drop the glass on and you can just cut it off and put icing around it. This has never happened to me, but um, say theoretically, uh, a, a building doesn't work like that. When a building gets damaged to the point where part of the building collapses, it's probably there's obviously uh, foundational um, issues. And so I would, to be honest, Chris, and this is my conservative answer, and I hope my good friend Bruno has a slightly less conservative answer, but my conservative answer is if a building is damaged to the point where there's a piece missing and it's because of water damage, I would um, really have to see a very good reason to buy it. Otherwise, just run mm. or swim. Yeah, <laughs> I know, agreed. Um, yeah, so the exactly what you said regarding the building lines, unless there's, and I mean, a good architect, a good engineer, you guys can look at, uh, the property depending on how big it is because i mean if it's a massive property a mansion uh, maybe only a portion of it um you know crosses the line so maybe there's a good conversation to be had around uh creatively restructuring it because remember certain things 
can't be built across lines. Certain things can because they're not subject to building plans. So uh, you can put something there because it's not permanent in nature. So maybe there's ways of actually creatively you know, building or constructing around this, uh, changing the plans, uh, building on the other side, it is going to cost a bit of money. But if it's that beautiful, and if that if that if it's that close to the cliff or the sea, um, it's definitely worth considering, especially as a lifestyle. I mean, people are willing to pay crazy amounts of money on properties that will never like fetch any real sort of return. So, uh, you know, if it's beautiful, yeah, sure, then approach the right team of people, commit and get it done. Thanks, guys. I really do appreciate that answer. And to anybody who's watching this and wants to take the risk, there's a property sitting at Wallet Beach in Belito. Very beautiful one indeed. 